In this video, we're going to look at how we can use light AOVs in Maya uh, with the Arnold renderer to take an image like this where we've got three lights, a red light, a blue light, and you can't see it in the background, but an HDR image. And to take this into After Effects as a single frame and be able to adjust the image and the lighting. So if I go into After Effects, you can see I've got something similar here, but I've got three images here and I can turn off the red lighting, the blue lighting, or the HDR lighting. And of course I can also work with things like their exposure to change the quality of the light. And this is all based on a single render from Maya, torusexample.exr. So this is using a merged EXR with lighting AOVs. We'll look at two examples. The second one is um, a little more complex where we're trying to make something like uh, neon lights, but we can use the same sort of thing to um, be able to control the different lights separately, all with a single render. So if I go in closer, you can see, for example, that this green light is being reflected on the glass of the orange neon. And when I turn down the opacity of the green light, it goes down on the uh, glass of the orange light too. So you're really controlling the different lighting in the scene rather than just the visibility of an object. And this is pretty simple to do. This is a little more complex, but we'll start with the simple scene and uh, go from there. So this will be a two part and it might be two videos or it might be one, depending how quickly things go. Okay, so let's go back to the simpler example and we'll go back into Maya. And I'm just going to delete some of these things that I've already got made here. So I'm not going to go into setting up the scene, but I just have a Taurus here, another Taurus, a plane, and then a HDR image in the background here. Um, two lights. So the HDR image is one light. It's a sky dome light with an HDR image attached to the color through a file node. And then we have one area light here that has sort of a red color, exposure of six, and then a bluish area light with the same intensity. And if I just go back to my previous camera position, and open up the Arnold render view, and just restart the render. So I'm going to update the full view. And we're not seeing that um, HDR image in the background simply because in its settings uh, for the HDR light, the sky dome light, I've got it set to zero in camera, but it's having an effect everywhere else. It just doesn't appear in the background. So this is our image here, and we don't need to do this part to go into After Effects, but in Maya, in the Arnold render view, if you click on this gear icon up to the top right, go to Add Imager, Add a Light Mixer, now it's going to re-render the image and you'll see that it adds these different settings for the different lights here. And I'll show you how I set that up in a minute. So this is finished, but now that I've got this, I can dial up the intensity of the HDR light or its exposure. So exposure will work a little differently with an HDR light, but on these area lights, we can turn up the intensity of the red, turn up the intensity of blue. We can hide the blue entirely, can solo the blue, can solo the red, can solo the HDR image. And so this is handy for pre-visualizing and checking how you want your light intensity to be without having to re-render. But this doesn't come out of Maya in the file um, naturally uh, in in a, into the EXR to take into After Effects. We have to go through a few other steps. This is just for pre-visualization. So the first question is, how did we get these different colors to show up here? Is it just because I have three different lights in the scene? 
And the answer to that is no. You have to do a little bit of setup here. So let me just close this. And if I select my um, sky dome light, you can see we have all of our normal settings. And down here under visibility, we've got something called AOV lighting group. So just as a uh, an aside, an AOV is an arbitrary output value. So it's just something that holds data in terms of the render for Arnold. And by default, this is called default. Um, so all the lights that you create in the scene, if I create a new light here, just Arnold lights, area light, you'll see that the AOV light group is default. And if you don't change this anywhere, when you make that light mixer, you'll just have one slider for default. However, if you select your light and change this to something, and I've called this one HDR, then that will show up as a separate slider. This one I've changed to red, and this one I've changed to blue. Now you can call these anything you want, it doesn't matter, but of course it's easier if you name them sensibly. So then when we do our render in Arnold, that's when these things show up. So. Well, I'd have to re-render this now, um, but that's why the sliders show up here. But we're not so interested in this. This is a great way to pre-visualize, but then the question is, how do I render this out to get that information into After Effects? Okay, so we have to go into our render settings here. First things first, we want to choose the file type that we're using, and the one that is most typically used nowadays because of the amount of information it can carry is an EXR. So EXR here. And by default, these two things will be turned off, half precision and merge AOVs. We turn on half precision because by default an EXR is a 32-bit uh, color depth file, and which is great. It allows for very fine editing and um, a very... Uh, granular approach to choosing colors because you've got so many millions of levels of color. Uh, but it makes for a big file. And if you're rendering out many frames, that if you don't go half precision, which turns it from a 32-bit to a 16-bit, your files will be pretty enormous. And that might be fine. That might be what you need for what you're doing. The type of work I do, I don't need that. So um, half precision is just fine. And then merge AOVs, it means that instead of getting multiple separate EXR files for every type of AOV that you make, um, it's all merged together in a single one. It'll make for a bigger single file, but it's easier to manage. It just takes a little work then to extract that information in After Effects, but not difficult work. So I'm just going to, yeah, I only have one camera here, and we can change our render size to whatever. But now the next important step is under AOVs. So you'll know from looking here before, there are lots of different AOVs. If you want to render at the subsurface scattering albedo separately from everything else, you can do that. If you want to render at a Z-depth pass, you can do that here. But what we want to do is uh, create three custom um, AOVs. Why three? Because we've got three lights. So the first one, and this is the naming strategy is important. It should be RGB, red, green, blue, A for alpha. That's just the type of um, AOV it is. And then underscore, and the name of the, um, the AOV category that you gave it earlier. So remember I gave this one the a light group, that's what it's called. AOV light group, I call that one HDR. So you have to make a new um, custom AOV with RGBA underscore HDR. So that one will be written out in its own layer, essentially, in the EXR that you can then bring into After Effects. So of course we need a couple more, RGBA underscore red. And I think capitalization matters, probably. It always seems to in Maya. RGBA blue, okay. And of course, there may be other types of depth or passes that you want to include, but we'll just include these ones for now. Okay, I'm just going to save this scene. Now, if you do a batch render at this point, these AOVs will all be written into your merged AOV or your EXR with merged AOVs, and you just have to do all the normal stuff of setting up where you want it to go. 
I'm just going to save it out of the Arnold render view, but all of this would work if you also went to um, rendering and did either a batch render or a render sequence here. Same thing. So let's just open up the Arnold render view again, and we'll update our full scene. And this has the imager turned on. We don't need this. I'm going to get rid of it in a second. Well, let's get rid of it now. Just right click and remove imager. Actually, I'm going to update the scene again now that I've removed the imager. Yeah, I thought it was too bright. It was getting all those extra settings I had put into the imager originally. So I just want this to go back to the uh, values I had uh, typed in for the lights originally. Okay, so I'm rendering this small and a pretty low quality, so it looks pretty grainy. But if we click on here now, you can see that it's written our separate AOV. So we can look at the blue one, the HDR one, and the red one. So that's all here. And it also writes a beauty pass. So if we go to File, Save Multi-Layered EXR. I'll just save it in here. And I'll call it something Taurus demo and then if I go over to After Effects I can bring in that file Taurus demo and I'll just drag it onto a composition now one thing for in this case um, I'm just gonna have it ignore the alpha channel right the background color here is white in this composition so I could just change the composition background color to match. Um, or I could just right click on Taurus demo, right click and say interpret footage main and tell it to ignore the alpha and it wouldn't really matter here. Okay, so now we have this one Taurus demo um, layer in our composition. And I'm just going to duplicate that. So we'll keep one without any changes to it. And you'll notice it's a little blown out feeling compared to this. Um, so we might have to adjust the exposure on these to match that a little more closely. But I'll just hide the background one. And on the one that I've just duplicated, I'll add an effect. I'm going to right click and go to Effect, 3D Channel, and choose Extractor. Now, this is not something, as far as I'm aware, that comes bundled with After Effects. Um, you have to go download it from another site. It's free. Uh, but if I just pop over to Firefox here, it's this fenordware.com open EXR. I'll put a link uh, along with the video. It's free, and you can download uh, the extractor. And there's some other things here. Maybe this is where you get CryptoMet, too. I can't remember. Um, but anyway, you just want to make sure you get Extractor. And we'll go back to After Effects. So on the Extractor um, effect, click beside where it says Layers. Now we can choose the, the AOV that we want to see. So you can see here that it's um, showing us the HDR uh, image. And it's a little dark, so I'm going to add an exposure control. So that's just under effects. I just searched for exposure over here. And I can turn this up. So the gamma correction, I can try 1.8 or 2.2. And I might end up changing this later on, but we can go back. But now that we have extractor and exposure on here, I'll just duplicate this layer. So control D or command D on a Mac. And in this new layer under Extractor, I'll change it to blue. So there's the blue one now. And I'll duplicate this one again, Control D or Command D. And in this new layer, I will change the Extractor to red. Now you can see the ones on top are including those below. So we just have to make sure that we turn the blending mode for all the top layers to add then they'll add together to make the image as we want it. Now you can see 
if we go in and let's just turn the gamma correction back to one for each of these layers because they're adding together now and if I just pop back into Maya so that looks pretty close to being the same let's just keep your eyes on that and go over it's a little bit darker um, so we can play around with the gamma correction here to brighten it up and you can also change the exposure to actually change that setting in the light so you can see that it's blowing out the, the highlights there a little bit but we can sort of recreate the image and modify it in the way that we want so we can turn up the red layer and that's really all there is to it and so let's say we wanted to well let's be smart and name our layers and we'll call this one HDR light this one is blue I think so we'll call this blue light and this one is red light Okay, and let's say we want to animate the blue light coming on. I could just animate the transparency of this. So just set a key on transparency and over, you know, a second. Have it go from zero. All right, so we can do something like that. We can also animate the exposure, but what you'll find here is if I go down to zero exposure in the exposure um, effect that I've added it doesn't go actually away it just goes back to its its default position but you could go do something like you know minus 50 to to turn it off and I think that is essentially off yeah it makes no difference but really that's all there is to it so you want to use um, set up your lights make sure you add the AOV light groups to each of the lights Make sure you add the custom AOVs and then export as a merged AOV at half precision. Bring that into After Effects and use Extractor to get those images in here separately. Um, and then use something like Exposure to adjust the colors as you like them. And don't forget that you have to add the top layers to whatever the bottom layer is. And it doesn't really matter the order uh, because they're just adding the pixel colors together. So this is a brief introduction and we'll come back and look at how to do the neon lights in a second video. Thanks.